So, what I have here are two of the most beautiful consoles ever made. These are two Game Gears from the same customer. Uh, at the time he he bring brings up three Game Gears and I could install a McQuill kit on one of them. It was uh, tremendously awesome. But these other two became just for parts. This one is terribly corroded and the board is in really bad shape. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. So it became a parts only console. And this one worked, everything was okay, but it had a bad screen. All the people that say that it's only replacing the capacitors and the game gears come to life. The more time it passes, the more game gears I find with a bad screen. Even my personal game gear that has had a good screen, one time to another, I powered it on and the screen started failing and died. So every screen on every game gear is on its way out. Most of them are already dead. So when you are buying a used game gear, to repair don't think that is just replace the capacitors and everything is going to be fine consider yourself to buy a, a replacement screen so the customer stated that he wanted the OGS kit because he had the McQueen one he was very satisfied but uh, this one has a much nicer contrast brightness and there is no space between the glass and the screen. This is like a cell phone screen. It's an OGS kit. And uh, it's a bit more troublesome to install on the game gear because you have to cut a lot on the case and do a lot of modifications. But the end result is uh, tremendously good in terms of uh, image quality. So let's try to fix this by replacing the screen with a new kit. So, game bit screw. I don't remember how this was, so I don't I don't remember if I recapped or if I left the caps in place. No, I haven't, so we need to populate the new capacitors in and, uh, yeah. and that's it, so I won't go step by step over the, the screen mod because there are lots of YouTube videos about it. I will just show some quirks of it and I will show you a very simple mod that I do now that I've found it. I do that mod on all game gears I have, on all the single ASIC at least. So here it is, looking good. This white frame is a bit cracked, but we won't need it. Lots of parts will have to come off and we will need to cut a big hole here on the front frame. One thing that I will save is the front glass. This one doesn't look too bad, it might come in handy. So I will remove this and this usually just peels off will come off slowly but this will unstuck itself with some patience and some time yeah as you can see it will unstuck slowly and it slowly peel off it's just a matter of pulling off the last part and the glass it's of the game gear. So I will remove the adhesive, clean everything, 
save the glass and let's go from here so after a lot of work here we have all the components to complete our game gear I've recapped the power supply I've recapped the soundboard speaking of sound ex excuse the background noise because there's music on the local church and it's very loud I've recapped all the game gear board and I've removed all the components that are not needed to work with this new modern screen. I've cut all the tabs on this plate that attaches to the back of this housing and I've cut the post of the, of the security screw that goes in here and I've cut a square hole in which the screen will go through it will glue like this and it needs to fit it needs to fit like this in the back perfectly so there are some tricks that I want to explain to you to cut this housing and one of them is you should do the cutting roughly through more or less this size I usually do it with a marker more or less by eye regarding where this would fit but you should never cut it right away on the correct position you should cut it a little bit to the inside and then make the last adjustments with an exacto knife cutting small layers until you align everything and the screen fits perfectly that's how I get it to to be adjusted exactly with a very with a very small clearance all around one thing that you also need to do is increase the radius of the LED hole in here because it usually uh, it's not perfectly aligned with the new glass that comes with these screens and then it's uh, it's better to make yeah you can see the hole it's better to increase the radius of that of that hole and that will make the LED shine through uh, perfectly through the new LCD so that's all we had to do to prepare this mod now the next step is test if the 5 volt circuit is okay and after that we can start assembling the mod and one mod that I like to do on all game gears it's something uh, I discovered recently and that is to close this jumper the J1 here next to the ASIC because it takes away the copyright message that comes on uh, briefly when you start your game gear and then it starts without that message it starts the game right away like the twin ASIC game gears that don't have that copyright message the game starts faster and it's easier for you to test if the, the sound is coming up or not because you don't have to wait that the copyright message shows up, goes back and then the game starts one thing that I like to remove is the transformer, the T1 I like to make the game gears lighter so I took that off also and it's now ready to go recap, prepared, let's reassemble everything So, soldering this part on the connector for the screen is always very difficult. So what I like to do is to use a very thin wire to help me to bridge these connections in a more strong and easy way. First you thin the wire, and then we cut it, and as you can see, you can have a better connection 
just with the wire bridging the ribbon cable and the LCD or the screen connector. After you get the neck of it, it gets pretty easy. So, there it goes. Let's reassemble the rest. One thing that I'll do is to solder these four fixation points only in the end, because as you will see, the position of this board affects the connection to the LCD screen connector itself so I've had some trouble with with those in the past so the last thing I do is usually define this position regarding the tension of the cable for the LCD screen on the front of course this gets like this over the board and that will define what is the final position of this everything is well connected our backlight wire must be cut off and I think we can plug in the LCD so let's plug it in it's in place connector is closed power supply let's see if nothing blows up so I will put this in the on position my bench power supply connect it Let's see, powering it up. Let's put the game cartridge. And I have Pit Sampras Tennis because it produces a sound as soon as it turned on. So, nothing. Is there any problem with the connections? We might, we might have some trouble with the power supply connections, sometimes it happens. Well, well, it's not working properly. Let's try to power it up with the batteries. No. Something is failing. I don't know if it's in the power supply side. Sometimes these connectors give bad contacts. <laughs> yeah, I think these wires to the power supply are not giving good power, not giving stable power. Usually what I, what I do is remove this connector completely and connect the wires to the board. I wish I could avoid that, but sometimes we need to do it on the main board and on the sound board. That's the part of the job I hate about Game Gears. And if someone tells you that they only need the Game Gear to be recapped, you know that's not going to be just a recap. You know that there's going to be a lot more, more troubles to solve. Or the screen or the corrosion, or the cables, whatever. Game Gears are never just a recap. Very rarely that happens, and some people get, get away with that, but usually it's never only a recap. And as the time passes, it gets less and less a recap job. 
don't get fooled by that. It's impressive how this connector that is always so quiet inside the console always gets broken here near the, the blue connector. It's a pain to take them off. This time it was okay. There's a bit of capacitor residue under here and you can smell it. It's not too bad, but it probably climbed up the wires and broke up the, the wire connections. So let's get them off, clean this and wire them back. So it doesn't look too bad. All the wires connected. I'll make a test first, see if we have any picture. Bench power supply is on, negative on negative. Let's put the positive and see if we have a boot. Nope. White screen, black screen again. It's weird because the power, the power light on the mod is turning on correctly. Now we have a white screen. We might we might have a dodgy a dodgy connector. Should we press? No. Should we pull? Yep. If we press no. Maybe it has nothing to do with the connector. Yep, yeah, turning on. Partial success. Let's see. It goes down when it goes very low. There's the frequency where it gets a bit audible. Very small. Yeah, and this is maximum brightness. It's looking good. So I think we have a success. Now we just need to know what's uh, intermittent and avoid it. So now moving the power board doesn't make any change to the screen and that's a good thing. If I turn it off on the switch and turn it on again, yep, it comes on perfectly. So for now it's a success. We have a working game gear. So it's a relief and tells me that everything inside the game gear is working perfectly. We just need to find out why it's running a little intermittent, but I think it's a dodgy um, connector that needs some cleaning. I think that's all. So let's keep, let's keep assembling the rest of the console and see if uh, we can give a good clean to the connector to see if everything is working properly. But the power consumption is 0 0.4 amps. Let's reassemble everything. Cleaning everything with isopropyl alcohol. So now we remove the adhesives. And You can see if it's in the final position by looking inside these holes and see if the glue gets flush with the other surface inside. So now we do a gentle pressing to fix the part in place and I think that's enough to fix it on this Game Gear shell. So it's looking awesome. We can peel a bit just to have a look. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Don't peel it off just yet because we might scratch it and we will do that in the end to reveal the prettiness of this machine. A white sheet of paper. What am 
I going to do with the white sheet of paper? I will fold it into some good thickness and try to give a clean to this game slot. Usually I will go dry like this. Sometimes I can use some contact cleaner and sometimes it takes a bit of something out this time just a little bit of dirt because I think I've cleaned this slot before but yeah paper is abrasive and you can clean your game slot with paper it's better than sending the contacts where you take out the, the coating of the contacts. Let's put the buttons. Let's put this in. Be careful with the speaker wire. Two big screws will fix the main board onto the front frame. Remember to turn the screws to the left to find the old groove and then screw it back on the same groove that's important especially in older plastics does it play well? yeah it looks like All the buttons are very, very pressable, everything looks okay, so let's keep screwing it. Yeah, always forget the red button when assembling the power supplies. It's a classic. So, turning on, turning off. Now we need to put the metal plate. And now, we will put the hot glue over this connector and the capacitor. It's quite hot and this is to avoid problems with these wires. Okay, so it's done. It's a terrible material leaves cobwebs all over but sometimes it helps to avoid future problems we should also put some on the sound connector to avoid it bending too much and breaking apart also because that's another classic problem of game gears these cables of the soundboard have exact, exactly the same problem as the cables of the power board and the sound starts failing and sometimes even the, the, the console goes to shut down because of trouble with the soundboard connections. And now we can put this connector back in. You need to be very careful because this has some sensitive components up in here and it, they usually uh, are against the position of the board and after you have everything pulled back in you close the connector and as you can see this gets in a very weird position okay? it springs back so you shouldn't press too much on it otherwise you might have uh, trouble so this part will fit in there let's see if there's no interference of this over this part but uh, we will reassemble it like this let's plug in the speaker let's plug in the soundboard and see if we have image, sounds and everything else. You need to be very careful to see if you're not smashing any wires. I think this is enough. So let's test it now.
Yes! Game gear on, we have sound. And we have a very jittery potentiometer, a very noisy potentiometer. Yeah, but it's working. It's working. Yeah, let's avoid reflections. As you can see, I can turn the contrast up and down. Yeah, we have a working game gear. Let's turn on again. Yep, it works. Nice. Really nice. Now everything is put together, it looks nice, and now it's the moment we've been all waiting for. So, oh yeah. Wow, how satisfying is that? No fingerprints, nothing, absolutely clean, new glass. <laughs> Let's turn it on, Let's see the image quality. Awesome. As you can see the volume is getting better and better the more we use it. Let's try to service. It's weird to play on this angle. This game is not good. So, everything's done, everything's fixed. I'll just put the wire to fix it on the back. Here it is. So, our game gear is fixed. Fixed and working. So, Let's put the sun down and wrap things up. It's time to wrap things up about this beautiful game gear. It will serve as a nice Christmas gift to someone who loves gaming and it looks absolutely stunning all around. It has a nice new screen, nice new glass, no specks of dust between the screen and the glass, everything is in order, all the covers, all the contacts, everything is perfect. So it's playing games for first try and everything is perfect. What's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching and maybe go out and fix some stuff. Have fun, take care, bye bye.